recently, and very surprisingly, Florida Senator Marco Rubio said something intelligent. It was over the UFO hearings, which have been in the news a bit. Maybe you've seen them. Marco Rubio said something very commonsensical. I'd like to praise him for it, because it has significant implications for how we should think about Donald Trump in this season of revisionist history. What Marco Rubio said was when it comes to the UFOs, either A, they're here and the government is covering it up, or B, we have an awful lot of people with some of the highest levels of security clearance that the government gives who are batshit crazy. It's either A or B. There's no other explanation. And so it is with Donald Trump. There's a recent political story. It posits a question. Does Chris Christie owe an apology for supporting Donald Trump? With regard to Chris Christie and his judgment around Donald Trump, his friend of many, many years, according to Chris Christie, there's a simple test. A, Chris Christie, who talked about the misjudgments that flowed from Bridgegate, has terrible judgment, or Chris Christie was politically expedient in the moment. Chris Christie doesn't owe an apology to anybody, but he does owe an explanation to voters around his judgment. And voters will render a judgment about Chris Christie's candidacy, which is really a reflection of the Trump era and Donald Trump. The Christie candidacy is significant and important because it offers a chance for self-reflection. Self-reflection doesn't require self-flagellation. Everything that has happened is what has happened. It is. And Chris Christie's role in it is recorded in plain sight for all to see. But the fact of the matter is, out of our nation of 330 million people, there are two political parties that they largely choose between. Donald Trump has always been boring. A celebrity. A New York tabloid sensation. Somebody who went broke running casinos. Somebody known to be utterly corrupt and fantastically untrustworthy in his business dealings. That's why so many people said, no, Donald Trump should never and can never and must never be the president of the United States. But what will be remembered as much as anything else in the Trump era isn't the depravity of Donald Trump alone. It is the submission, the collaboration, and the selling out by a few thousand people. And that's all there is, really. Sometimes we lose sight of who is the they and how many of them are there. When we're talking about the Republican they in the Congress of the United States, with just members, including the House and Senate, we're talking under 300 people. When we add their staffs, we're talking a little bit over 1,000. When we add the political party staffs and the state party political staffs, it's a few thousand people. The MAGA leadership cast, I'm talking about the people at the top, the elected officials, federally, at a state level, at a county level, at a local level, the activists, the super donors. In a country of 330 million people, we are talking about a population in the thousands, not in the millions. This is not an army. It is a cabal. This is one of the greatest eras of corruption in the entire long history of the United States. And it has been brought to the American people entirely by the complicity of the cowards who have enabled and abetted Donald Trump. Again, for a long time, 
Chris Christie was one of them. He should be ashamed of it because he knew better. And if he's not ashamed of it, then he's a sociopath, just like Trump. But more likely, he was expedient. He tried to surf the wave. And now here we are. Chris Christie did not cross the final Rubicon with Trump. He did not join Donald Trump in trying to subvert the American Constitution. He did not try to participate in a coup. He did not try to topple the presidency. He did not end the peaceful transition of power. Because he did not, he is worth listening to, because so many did. Thank you for listening to my political commentary. If you like what you heard today, please also consider subscribing to The Warning, daily newsletter on Substack. Our democracy hangs in the balance. The 2024 presidential election is the most consequential in America's history. It's not hyperbole. It's a fact. That is why the mission of The Warning with Steve Schmidt is to help readers orient to the currents that are shaping our times and the unseen forces driving politics that are very rarely discussed on cable news. Please sign up at Steve Schmidt, S-T-E-V-E-S-C-H-M-I-D-T dot substack dot com. Again, Steve Schmidt dot substack dot com or at the link in the show notes section below. Thank you to each and every one of you for listening and watching. Donald Trump wants four more years and he wants them to settle scores. He wants them for revenge. He wants them for retribution. And the question isn't whether Chris Christie owes an apology. It's whether Chris Christie is telling the truth now. The question is for the American people, what will we do about Donald Trump, his ambitions, and the untrustworthy men around him? Those people will burn it all down to get back into power. There are not enough of them, though. What they pray for is there is enough indifference to join with their army of malice to win narrowly an election that under America's electoral college system favors the Republican candidate. The months ahead will be grueling for America. They will assault the American spirit. They will be degrading. Our leaders, who are disappointments to say the least, on the Republican side, will continue to debase themselves in the name of Donald Trump. We will see new sycophants rise, like Vivek Ramaswamy, and we will see old sycophants like Ron DeSantis collapse into dust. There will be turbulence and turmoil ahead. But one thing is clear. Don't let anybody ever tell you they couldn't see this coming. What did people think would happen when they supported Donald Trump? Well, the truth of the matter is, in Chris Christie's case, he thought good things would happen for him. And so on down the line it went until a terrible thing happened to the country. A crisis is at hand. There is a force that seeks to tear down what has taken 250 years to build. They seek to remake the idea of an America where some become more equal than others again. No way should be the answer of the American people. Engagement, involvement, love of country requires patriotism be practiced, not just preached. Get involved. Your country's future depends on it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video.
Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our warning premium community. You can find out more in the description below.